we are we are live, which is amazing, and uh, that's good to see you drinking your gravy there. <laughs> <laughs> that's my chocolate BHB. Yes, and uh, I'm actually trying that, so thank you for that. That's really good. So, what's the benefit of the the BHB then? All of the benefits that you would achieve from being in a ketogenic state, um, only enhanced. So it's nothing you can't achieve naturally from being carnivore ketogenic. Um, but so hundreds of benefits. The reason that I'm taking this today is that I completed a duathlon today, my second duathlon. Um, and I'm absolutely wrecked. So a couple of reasons, <laughs> actually. Uh, I wanted some energy for the brain so I could concentrate because I'm absolutely exhausted. And secondly, uh, exogenous ketones will increase EPO naturally within the body when taken after intense exercise. Um, so those are my two, plus it combats inflammation and the list goes on and on. But yeah, mm. so there is a method to my mind. <laughs> uh, what, uh, well, we've got M here, just M, uh, chocolate is a good brain energizer. So... That's good. The BHB and a bit of chocolate. Is that, would that be true? Do you think? You know, co work does come from a plant. I do flavor my chocolate BHB with cocoa. Mm -hmm. Anything from a plant consumed in. I don't drink too much coffee. I still drink coffee. I love drinking coffee. Excess is going to relate to a negative benefit, but it depends on how much chocolate one was eating. If you are eating a poor lifestyle and you start to eat vegetables, you're going to see a benefit. You know, if you're eating a poor lifestyle and you, you revert to dark chocolate, you're going to see a benefit. All of these so-called antioxidant benefits from plants are not antioxidants. They are, in fact, a pro-oxidant effect. You can get away with consuming X amount. I think it's a drug. There we are. <laughs> and I'm addicted to coffee. I only see the upside when I drink coffee. Anthony Chafee, when he consumes coffee, uh, becomes inflamed. And he notices almost immediately any benefit to him uh, consuming coffee is negated by the negative effect. I don't feel that it inflames my body. Uh, I train intensely. So um, you would expect that I'm highly attuned to my body in regards to inflammation, aches and pains. Um, when I take it out, you know, I'm aching just as much uh, as I do, you know, when I keep it in. But I do notice a benefit when it comes to training because caffeine is a known ergogenic aid. So I use these things to confer a benefit depending on what that benefit could be and the timing of taking that. So I wouldn't drink coffee before bed <laughs> because mm -hmm. it keeps me awake. So as the stimulant effect would be negative in that respect. Too much coffee uh, it's high in acrylamide, which is a known carcinogen. So, you know, I wouldn't consume it in excess. I Just to remind you to please subscribe. It alters the glutamate to GABA ratio, which can lead to anxiety and depression. So people who drink, you know, silly amounts of, of, of coffee, it can lead to feeling, you know, negative thoughts, um, yeah. self-doubt and, and this sort of thing. You know, not to mention insomnia and uh, lots of other sort of downstream uh, deleterious effects of, of overconsumption. Yeah. But then a little bit can confer a benefit. If you were living a carnivore lifestyle, uh, you know, strict, you, you were going to be, uh, you're going to benefit more without putting it in. If you are that strict, put in, you know, a few pieces in now and again, isn't going to cause any harm anyway. Your context is incredibly important. We have yeah. healed our gut. Our guts are healed. We no longer suffer with this intestinal permeability. You know, if we were to go back eating these foods day after day, then, you know, potentially, uh, you know, but it, I, I think if we compare it to a, a standard lifestyle, then it, it, it's all about context. I mean, when I did my advanced personal training certificate many years ago, interesting to see caffeine is a banned substance in so many sports. When I got involved with the javelin thrower, the Olympic javelin thrower, I mean, you've just got to avoid caffeine. So why am I saying that? Well, it proves it gives you an edge. Because wasn't it sort of over the last few years deemed not to, you know, have an impact on athletic performance? You know, you could argue the food would improve performance, you know, yes. because if yes. you had the correct nutrients, you're going to perform better. And that doesn't mean that you can't perform without fasting. I'm on about on 
Not yeah. on a daily basis, you know, but on, on a level playing field. But Manchester City striker Eric Haaland, who's uh, a Haaland, however you want to pronounce it, you know, he's bucking the trend and having liver and protein and mouth taping and wearing blue blockers and doing all these sort of things. And he's, you know, basically the top scoring uh, striker last year in the Premier League, beyond belief performance. So we are seeing that in the mainstream. Sorry to interrupt you, Rich, but, you know, it, that is being talked about. Sadly, I mean, even today, it's, it's still reported in a derogatory fashion as in it's weird, it's strange. He, he eats liver and meat, and that's pretty much all he eats. He's 23 and he's still growing. You know, is it this weird diet? He's at the peak of his performance and looking amazing and growing. So it's it's out there. Matthew's got this question in the context of something you said last week, and he's he's making a, an, a sort of an add to it. Would having a healthy fat with beef protein isolate powder change the absorption rate of 10G an hour and 15G in 90 minutes? Um, you, you should imagine so. Yeah. I mean, it's I try to eat protein with fat um, always. Now, I do produce a whey type of protein, which I believe to be, you know, as clean as it can be. Now, that said, I believe that a beef isolate is cleaner, although it comes back to the absorption rate. So, you know, two conflicting things, and it depends on what your goals are. Um, but even with the protein that um, that I make, if, if I do use it or when I do use it, I will add um, a fat to that. Uh, the reason I don't put the fat in is that some people who are looking to increase protein are not always looking to increase fat. And the bioavailability is a lot higher from... Um, uh, a casein protein, a whey-based casein, than it is from uh, a beef, beef isolate, for example. Uh, so, yeah, add the fat. Um, that's a fantastic workaround if you're not tied to tracking macros and you're not looking to restrict fat. Uh, you know, one of the benefits to add in the protein for me is cutting for a competition, for mm -hmm. example. So, you know, you can eat the, the lean protein. You know, you can get the tuna, the bass, the fish, the chicken. Um, and this will stimulate the body to upregulate uh, its own fat burning process. Um, and that will allow you to lose weight. So if you're looking to, to drop a few pounds incredibly quickly, uh, you know, eating those lean cuts are a fantastic way. Um, no pun intended, but it another great option is adding in a protein supplement, especially if you're on the go. You know, it's uh, it's always handy to, to take with you. So if you, if you are doing that and you're not tied to fat macros, by all means, put some fat in. Yeah, that's great. Um, yes, and Matthew, thank you for joining the Fat Club and uh, attending our live. If you're interested in uh, more of these live streams, we do one tomorrow at 5 p.m., but it's only in uh, Mighty Networks. But there we go. Right, we have another uh, We have another question, actually. Pamela Gordon. Hello, Pamela. I am carnivore. I have been getting really sleepy, sleepy after eating two to three hours. Right. I'm not doing very well with reading. I'm going to do it again. Okay, take two. Pamela Gordon, I am carnivore. I have been getting really sleepy after eating two or three hour naps and really cold, shivery cold. Any thoughts? Yeah. Do you know, I had this recently with um, a client. Um, it could be a number of reasons. They could be new to carnivore. Um, so they're still suffer, suffering with um, hypoglycemia. Uh, after eating food and not assimilating the proteins and fats effectively. Uh, but what I found with the client that I was working with, this is somebody who has been carnival for a long time. Um, they were adding in uh, fats that they were getting from the supermarket and they were processed meats, which were higher in linoleic acid. Um, so I, I put it down to this. I put it down to the, the increase in insulin resistance. And when in, insulin uh, increases, it, it can lead to all sorts of downstream you know, effects. Uh, this is why if we eat carbohydrate, we'll have uh, insulin release and then a blood glucose crash. Uh, so it could be related to that. Uh, it could be not eating enough. Uh, it could be eating too much. So, I mean, there's um, you know lots of, of other sort of contributing factors there. Um, the, Definitely the source of the meat for, for certain could, could be a big impact. You know, are you only eating lean cuts? Um, are you eating predominantly beef or is it eggs? Are you maybe having a reaction to, to the eggs? Uh, a lot of people have reactions to eggs and fish uh, and cheese. 
you know, other, other dairy products. Um, lot, lots of things. But what I would suggest to do is an elimination protocol, um, removing everything, not one thing at a time, taking everything out, uh, seeing if that improves, coming back to maybe eating just beef um, or lamb, uh, and then reintroducing certain things and seeing what impact it has. But grass-fed from your local butcher is always going to be better. Um, I'm not a big fan of, of uh, supermarket bought, bought meats, uh, but I do understand that it's a purpose to it. But if cash is an issue when it comes to buying protein, beef mints is incredibly cheap, and your local butcher will probably add the offcuts of the offal to the mints, so you get all of the benefits of the liver, heart, and kidney um, with, without even paying for it, essentially. So that's what I tend to do. I eat a lot of mints. Uh, and I'm going to yeah. be putting in a lot more lamb as well. So lamb, I think, is, is another well underrated source of, uh, of protein and fat. Amongst yeah, absolutely. Things. I mean, I, I would say the getting, well, Pamela, we probably need to know how long you've been carnivore. And is this something that's developed? Let's say you've been carnivore two years as it suddenly started. Uh, yeah. And uh, Rich is right. What are you eating? Are you eating ribeyes? Are you eating eggs? Are you eating ground beef? Are you eating fish? So what sort of carnivore are you? So this is uh, just um, not being critical of you. It's just to be helpful. The more information you can give, but very interesting notation. Uh, you know, I am carnivore two years. I get sleepy after eating, mainly after ribeyes. So because um, getting sleepy after eating is definitely when you're new to carnivore, something that you experience ever such a lot because it takes a lot more energy to digest. That can also explain the coldness sometimes because your thyroid is trying to regulate your temperature, whereas your digestive system is trying to digest stuff. Um, so you might find, although there is a thermic effect of food, that the um, digestion is taking some of the energy away from your thyroid to produce the right temperature, shivery cold. So yeah, and is it, if this is a new thing, maybe you've got an infection, maybe it's nothing to do with food at all. So yeah, uh, hopefully that was help, helpful. We have a nice, I like this, once a week man, for those people on the audio podcast, the week is W-E-A-K. Uh, but I do know there's a joke about a once a week man, um, which is <laughs> so has a new a naughty connotation. So anyway, I like the name, and he's just saying, "Remember, remember the sizzle at seven. But yeah, we need it doesn't really pan properly, does it? Uh, Cammy, hey, hey. Uh, chocolate is very high in oxalates. The darker, the worse. Yeah, and this is the thing because dark chocolate people like because it's not got milk in it and it's not got, you know, uh, lots of sugar. But when you have the darker chocolate, you do have higher oxalates. And then you get into the subject of stearic acid. But I, I think we'll move on from chocolate. Don't want to talk about that too much unless it keeps coming up. And then we'll go back to it. Tom Jay, good evening. I think that's one of your followers, isn't it, Rich? Tom Jay? Yeah, Tom. Um, yeah I believe so. Tom's been, he, uh, Tom's been with us for a little while now, hasn't he? The last yeah. um, couple of weeks or so. Yeah. I'm not going to do my Tom Jones joke, <laughs> you know, because uh, it would be unusual if I did. Right. Carnival muscle. That's Jonathan. Yes. He is talking about the absorption here. Absor absorption is the same. Assimilation is no different accompanying protein with fat. And Richard says, I recommend my friend Richard's keto product, top shelf stuff. That's good. Um, but that, that is true, though, isn't it, Rich? Because absorption and utilization are two different things. And um, the, the rate you absorb it is important. And when you absorb it, when you, you know, so, so much. So just them. Yes, Cammy, I'm aware of that. It's not a regular part of my diet. But like Rich with his coffee, I've experienced only benefits when I have the occasional cup of hot raw cocoa. So, yeah, this is it. I think it's all about knowing having informed decisions when you ingest anything. Now, Andrea, and I'm not going to produce any laughs by trying to do that <laughs> surname, uh, I had a lactate threshold test done, and the result was I have strong degree of lactate tolerance. Does low-carb lifestyle affect this? I can't find any studies on this. I am a PHCI coach. Thank you. Because obviously that's a uh, obler, isn't it? You know, you, the onset of, uh, oh, blimey, this is going back to my training. You you look at that when you're training people 
the onset of lactate. Can't remember the, uh, the mnemonic. The mnemonic is supposed to help you, but I can't remember the mnemonic. But anyway, yeah, what do you reckon on that? Yeah, unsure. It, um, that's one to look into, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I would imagine that the low-carb lifestyle would actually improve. Well, um, it, it, you know, if we're talking about um, well, muscle lactate, we know is yeah. shuttled to the liver much more efficiently when we are low-carb ketogenic adapted. Um, mm -hmm. So it it leads to not us not suffering with these these DOMS, you know, the daily um, uh, the delayed onset muscle soreness. Um, and what I noticed when I was bodybuilding is that I would never reach that sort of that vein popping pump that I would on carbohydrate, but that vein popping pump is lactate buildup and it's the body's inefficiently, uh, inefficiency to, uh, buffer the hydrogen ions and lead to, to lactate buildup. Um, so I guess, yeah, I mean, it, it makes it more efficient in that respect. So in regards to blood testing, I know I'm unsure outside of the realms of training, but it makes sense if, if it does that. It it, it certainly abreclates that that system, the lactic acid system, um, and allows us to buffer uh, and perform at a much higher intensity for for a lot longer. So I guess it does make sense. Yeah, I was just trying to look up in my notes, but um, anyway, um, I can't find it. So people, it's boring me typing. Right, uh, let's move on. So Jonathan says, Carnival Muscle says, all cacao products give him a headache or make him feel unwell, headaches, etc. Right, uh, Yuri. Hi, can I ask questions here? Well, yes, you've just done that. So that's it. That's your one used up. Um, not really. Of course you can ask questions here. Uh, it's free for all. And if you want to get it promptly done, then you can do, um, you know, a super chat, make a donation, which is very handy. Uh, can we, yes, it can be used as a hit of oxalates if you need to starve off dumping episodes. So um, what I'm going to do from now, just to keep us flowing, is try not to do too much of the to and fro in, in the chat, but just try and get to um, some of the questions. But for now, we'll carry on. Car Carnival Muscle, this is a great place to ask questions. I would rate it top four of all Carnival Q&As. Right. Well, let's throw the gauntlet down. Top four would imply we are fourth, because if we were a third, he would say top three. So I'd like to know the other three. And we're quite happy to talk about other people, aren't we? Um, so what about this one? This is good. Cat uh, Diamond. Pamela, are you taking iodine? That should help with body temperature. And I think that's because it's supporting um, thyroid function or production of thyroid hormone, actually. So uh, your collagen powder, does that have selenium in it, Rich? The electrolytes, too. It does, yeah? The electrolytes, yeah, yeah not the collagen. The electrolytes. Right. I do collagen as well, but uh, it's the electrolytes, yeah, contain selenium, molybdenum, and astaxanthin. So some whole Go on, tell us about that. The astaxanthin is a compound that is found naturally in things like salmon. Um, it's what gives salmon the the, the pink color. Um, it is the only true antioxidant on the planet. Uh, and by that, I mean these other things from plants that we are told are antioxidants are in fact pro-oxidants. They begin their journey as pro-oxidants. And the theory is that this um, this hormetic effect, so we'll, we'll benefit from uh, the effect of homesis where we put a little bit of bad in, uh, the body will increase glutathione, the body's master antioxidant, and we will uh, confer a benefit from, from taking that, that uh, toxin from, from a plant. Um, except that isn't true because these plants or so-called antioxidants activate something called the NRF2 pathway, which is an oxidative stress pathway. Um, the body sees this as, as a, a, a pro-oxidant, increases glutathione to conjugate to this toxin to excrete it from the body. And we would elicit the same response from ingesting things like mercury, lead, arsenic, tobacco smoke, um, you know, exhaust fumes. So if we are to believe that these plants have an antioxidant effect, then we also must believe that lead and arsenic and mercury are also good for us because they elicit the same response. But this astaxanthin, 
is the only compound uh, that I know of on the planet that will elicit a true antioxidant effect without becoming a pro-oxidant first. And it's as an antioxidant, it's 550 times more potent than vitamin E. It's uh, 60 to 80 times stronger. And some studies have gone up to 200 times stronger than vitamin C, uh, 800 times stronger than coenzyme Q10. Uh, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, there, I've probably got 20 to 30 studies, clinical trials, research papers, um, conferring benefits, huge benefits to astaxanthin. And it comes from things like salmon. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are other animals that, that contain uh, th this compound as well. But astaxanthin comes in two different forms. We have a natural version and a synthetic version. So many supplements on the market will claim to, to have this, this astaxanthin. But it's a, it, in most cases, it's a synthetic version, especially if it's in the UK, because as far as I'm aware, I'm the only company in the UK that has the, the rights to use um, this, this particular type of, of astaxanthin, which is 21 times more potent than the synthetic version. Uh, so don't always believe what you read on a label. But astaxanthin, again, comes from animal proteins. So, which brings us Brilliant. back to, to carnivore. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, obla was what I was trying to think of. Onset of blood lactate accumulate, accumulation, also known as lactate threshold, refers to exercise that intensity which lactate levels in the blood begin to accumulate more rapidly and that's when um your performance starts to drop off um that's brilliant rich that's really good so let's get back to the questions so i've, I've lost myself now so doo -doo -doo, yeah could you speak about this is against once a week man was that the person that asked if we can ask a question anyway no it wasn't could you speak a little bit about what to use to brush your teeth I heard Richard says he uses MCT oil. Is that true? Yeah, I use MCT oil for everything. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you do my... oil pulling? Sorry? Do you do, do you do oil pulling as well? Oil your team? pulling. Pulling. P-U-L-L-I-N-G. Oil no, pulling. Right. No. That, no. Well, that is, that's where I mean. you put an oil in your mouth and then you sort of suck it and swirl it around and suck it and... Um, it sort of gets in between the gaps and you do it for two or three minutes and some some people swear by it and think it's fantastic so as you would with a mouthwash in effect yeah pretty much yeah, yeah. so but, um, it, yeah I, I'll, I'll give it a swell um i tend to drink it mind <laughs> instead <laughs> of spitting it but i certainly don't swill it for two or three minutes you know it's uh it's a quick swoosh uh, and i have been known to to wash my hair as well with uh with mct um but it, you know, it, it can be can be quite expensive. But um, having said that, you don't need an awful lot, you know. So you, you could use an avocado oil or something instead. Um, although avocado oil is probably just as expensive, actually, especially for the volume that you would use. But a tallow uh, I use for skincare, so I use uh, a, a tallow cream um, for my. I used to suffer with dry hands when I was younger. In fact, all my life I've suffered with this 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 condition. Well, my hands would go dry to the point where if you know, I clenched my fist, I, it would crack and bleed. And I was on all of these uh, hand creams for years and years and years from the supermarkets. I, I, I had uh, hand creams on, um, prescription from the doctor, medicated creams. I used to have creams or this, uh, this, this little spot thing as well for the acne that I used to suffer with as an adult. So I used to have prescription. I, I can't remember what it was, but it's, it's, it's in this little, excuse me, it's in this little um, little tube. And when you get a spot or, you know, acne, you, you dab it on and it's meant to sort of sterilize and, and, and kill the spot. And I used to use that for years and years and years, uh, all of which have completely gone away since I've become keto and more so carnivore. So... Something else to, to add to the list of, of benefits that we don't uh, quite often speak about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I use tallow um, in the shower. We have a water softener, so salt is added to the water. Um, that's the first thing. So when you look at the glass on the shower, if it's got that sort of misty mugginess that you have to clean off, we don't get that at all because um, the water softener means that there is no um, staining on any of the shower panels uh so yeah i just use tallow for that uh, and tallow to washing 
That's all I do. I don't use any other sort of things like moisturizers and stuff. Looking at my face in HD, maybe I should. Um, not nice doing time. too bad for 59. And I clean my teeth with a salt solution. And my hair gel is water and salt. Simple as that. It's a little spray bottle with some salt in. And I couldn't believe the difference because I used to get very uh, sweaty very sweaty when I was training and working out and the gel would get in here and it would be awful. But anyway, since I've been doing that, it's been much, much better, much, much better. So yeah, you can do all this fantastically. So um, thank you, Jonathan, for becoming a member. That's really nice. I, I appreciate that. And strangely enough, going back to your top four, top four, um, you've actually written who you think is in your top four. So, yes. So, um, Harry Sopanos. Yes, I understand that totally and utterly. And if that's someone new to you, Rich, he would beat you hands down in long answers. He <laughs> would do, he used to do weekly live streams that would be five hours quite easily. Yeah, just on his own. And um, he is an absolute font of knowledge. And I've had it, I've, I've interviewed him a couple of times and he's a top bloke, top bloke. So I'm not assuming, I'm not going to assume in order that he's number one, but the top three or four. So you've got uh, Harry Sopanos, then you've got Bart Kayek. Bart, I'm not sure he does live Q&As as much as he used to. Uh, and I'm a guest on his show tomorrow. So that's quite weird. Uh, timing, that's good. Uh, Dr. Chafee. Yeah, he's all right, isn't he, Rich? He's okay. And what is CMR? What is CMR? Do you know who that is? Would that be Carnival Muscle Revolution or something? Is that you, yourself, Jonathan? I don't know. But anyway, uh, by the way, Jonathan is a carnivore in the UK. So we've got a little bit of news here. Um, myself and Rich and Jonathan and Phil Escott. And Ben Hunt, who's a bit too shy at the moment. Uh, we were talking about the fact we need a little group of carnivores in the UK to do a sort of weekly thing about just carnivores in the UK. So we're doing that. And I think we're doing that Tuesday night at seven o'clock. I don't know if Rich is able to make it because he wasn't able to make the first meeting because I think he was out with your daughter. And that's fair enough, too. So it's going to be one of one, two, three, four, five of us. And also, I'm going to put a call out there. If you know any carnivore you can. UK carnivores, influencers that you think would be very good to get on to um, to that show, then please suggest it either, you know, by emailing me or Jonathan or Rich. And because we just want a map with lots and lots of dots everywhere of all these different people that, um, you know, are carnivores in the UK. Do you think you'll be doing it, Rich, this Tuesday? Quite, quite possibly a few things to add to that. So I've um, um, the carnivore consultant Jonathan and myself recorded a podcast months and months and months ago. And it's an incredible podcast that I still haven't got round to releasing yet. Um, I've got a massive backlog, so I'm that's my next one to release, and I'm well behind on on releasing. So stay tuned for that one. Um, yeah, I was I was away on so I left Friday um, to travel. Uh, to Devon. So the reason for that is I was competing today in a duathlon. Um, it was uh, a GB qualifying duathlon and there was around 400 of uh, the best athletes in the UK competing. So I was well out of my league, but that was, that was, that happened today. Um, but what I wanted to do, the idea was to travel uh, up, up early and on the Friday, and I wanted to spend the day up there with my little girl, go into a few sort of amusement parks and various things. But the amusement park was closed due to the weather. So we were going to go to, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called. There's a little village, little miniature village uh, where things are sort of uh, model village. What's it called? Um, I want to say Babadook, but it's not because that's a that's a horror film. But it, it, rhyme, it rhymes it rhymes with that. There's something Baba in there, Babaku maybe. Um, so we headed off to 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 that on Friday, so I could spend some time with my little girl uh, and and the missus before sort of competing and doing my thing on on the on the Sunday. Except I woke up, I had a, a screw in my tire on 
Friday morning. So I had to wait till the garage opened. I took it to the garage. They didn't have my tire in stock. I was incredibly late leaving. Um, so we didn't leave until uh, gone 11. And then 20 minutes into the journey, I had another flat tire on the other side to which I had to pull over and uh, inspect the wheel and pump it up. And anyway, long, long and short of it is we didn't get to do anything on Friday. Um, because we didn't get up there till till too too late until this uh, a, a attraction was closed, so I made up for that on Saturday. But that's what I was on Friday, and I competed in that duathlon today, which uh, is the reason that I'm half soaked, I think, and a little bit exhausted. Um, yeah, basically fighting for my life for a couple of hours against some of the, the best athletes in in the UK, having only recently began running and and cycling so it was uh it was a <laughs> it was an eye opener um yeah brilliant uh, so just for people that are wondering where we are in the comments so we're 15 minutes behind at the moment because matthew's comment there it was posted at 7 15 we will try to get to every comment and question uh matthew's just got a comment really a few years ago i had a bodybuilder work colleague who only ate white fish such as cod for seven days straight for rapid weight loss he looked great but was very tired and yeah you probably um you need the fat so there's an incredible way to strip but it um you do need to put those fat refeeds in so if it's for a, a specific purpose doing that in the short term is an ideal way, uh, way to, to strip the fat but i noticed when i was doing consultations of public speaking events when I used to compete and I'd strip and go uh, a long time without fat, that I was unable to form words. I was giving presentations, forgetting why I was there. So fat is incredibly important. So if you are doing that, do it sensibly uh, and, and do your, your fat refeeds to, uh, to overcompensate for, for lack of energy. Plus, this person is obviously coming from a carb background as well. So there's that whole adaptation period and, and lack of, uh, of sodium and dropping insulin and, and everything else that we've spoken about previously. Great stuff. Um, could you zoom in on your camera a little bit, or is that not possible, by the way? One nine. Yeah. Because yeah, I like to see this brilliant remote control working. Do, do, and we do, can do. Uh, get you look. Because nope. you look so small compared to me. That's good. And it'll look better on a reel. Right. Here we go. So, yeah. Uh, Guam 83. G W A M 83. Here's the question. I've tried carnivore twice, failed day nine and then day 16. I always lose 15 to 20% strength in the gym. And as the days progress, I feel worse and worse. Is this just not for me? Now, everybody feels the same way. It's You're coming from a lifetime of being fueled by, by glucose. Your whole gut microbiome is geared up to processing um, specific things for, for nutrients. And now you're taking that energy away. You're taking that... Um, you're changing your whole gut microbiome. So you're altering the firmicutes and bacroidetes. And it takes time to upregulate. And you need to uh, be able to assimilate those fats uh, and proteins effectively. And it's, it's a transition period. So initially, you have that drop in insulin, which is signaling the kidneys to release sodium from four points uh, in the nephrons in the kidneys. Uh, it, it, and with that, with that fluid loss and, and that sodium loss, this leads to what's known as keto flu or was once known as the Atkins flu. So sodium is incredibly important. Um, sodium, lots of sodium can, can compensate for uh, much of the loss because it's not, uh, you're not losing um, muscle, it's volume in the muscle. So maybe supplement with creatine as well, but there is an adaptation period and it can take you know, Stephen and I have, have spoken to to various uh, listeners and, and personal experiences. It, it took me nearly 12 months to fully adapt, but the general consensus is three to six months to fully adapt. Uh, strength, everything will, will drop off a cliff init initially, but you need to make sure that you persevere, um, keep, the, keep the protein in, keep the fat in, um, get plenty of electrolytes, make sure the potassium and sodium ratio is, is accurate. Uh, don't fear the fat because now you need to signal um, the body to to transition into burning fats. Uh, you can do this through, you know, potentially supplementing with an MCT powder or exogenous ketones also, but salts are super important. So you can use electrolytes or salt your meals um, with like a pink Himalayan or a Celtic sea salt. Um, but it is very common. I think almost everybody who has transitioned into this, this lifestyle has experienced that. And it, I, it took me maybe two or three weeks until I started to feel any sort of benefit at all, or even any 
resemblance of my previous self because I, you know, I've, I've explained before that I genuinely thought that I was going to die, um, but I was so unhappy with the way that I looked and and uh, various other factors in my life that I persevered. And one day I woke up and I felt the best that I had ever felt. So it, uh, how you go about this is incredibly important. But salt, protein, and fat uh, are three of of my main pillars that um, that I would strongly yeah. recommend. Consistency is key. Yeah, and I think you've got to look at it. Uh, I, I just take a bit of a broader ap approach. Your body, all the mechanisms in your body have got to change. Everything's got to change. You've got to adapt. And I, I often talk about the fact that I'm pretty good at tennis. All right. Now, this might sound a bit out there, but and I've won a single title. Now, if you've never played tennis before and you gave me a game, you possibly would want to give up because you've never played tennis before, you don't know how it works, you don't know how to serve, you don't know how to hit the ball and all this sort of stuff. And maybe after day nine, you'd want to give up because maybe you wouldn't be making the progress. But if you had a good coach and someone saying to you, well, stick with it, this is what everybody, what, like Rich just said, this is what everybody goes through, don't worry. You know, I was a learner once, to stick with it, and then you get to day 16 and you, another day when you think you're going to give up and say, look, you are getting better. There are these little changes you're maybe not aware You've just got to stick with it. And that's what your body's doing. It's just adapting. And um, sometimes you have to take two steps back to make one step forward. But eventually, as you become less and less dependent on carbs, what happens is there is a flip in this. And you might go back to carbohydrates after, let's say, doing it for three, four months. And you find that the carbohydrates that made you feel fantastic or you thought made you feel fantastic um, the effect it would have would be awful. And then going back to a high carbohydrate diet would be difficult. And after day nine, you thought, oh, I can't do this any longer. I want to go back to feeling really good like I did on carnivore. So th there is there is many ways to look at this. But I think listening to the right people and get, getting the right electrolytes is, is key. And, and um, I hope that's uh, a good answer for you. We've got Rob Roy now. Um, good evening, gents from South Africa. I'm a 5,000 meter athlete and new to carnivore. Would Richard mind giving me a rough idea of what he would prioritize to try and achieve optimal performance? So I think we've just had a little bit in that last question. Is there anything you want to add because we're talking about this particular athletic? Yeah, um, look, it's we've endeavor. so we've you know I think this is a, a brilliant segue from the last uh, the last comment. It, there's specific enzymes and uh, and pathways in the body that we need to upregulate. Um, particularly the monocoboxylate transporters, the MCTs, not to be confused with medium chain triglycerides. It takes time to adapt. So consistency is key. Keep doing what you're doing. Salt is super important. So everything that we've just mentioned. But if there's one thing that I tell people that is is, is incredibly important, and it's, it's protein. It's always the protein because every cell in your body is made of protein. Every cell is made of fat. Every protein source in nature comes with fat. An egg is, is roughly equal amounts of protein to fat, steak, salmon, all of these things, chicken breast with the skin on, all of these animal proteins come coupled with fat. So eat as nature intended. And what you will find is when you remove the foods um, that contain the lectins and phytic acid, so, you know, the, the breads, the pastas, the rice, and all, all the typical things, that, the oats that um, athletes would tend to use, suddenly your body's going to absorb these, you know, more of these nutrients. Uh, phytic acid and lectins can block the absorption of things like um, zinc, iron, and magnesium by as much as 100%. And zinc is essential for the production of testosterone, and testosterone we need to heal, repair, and grow muscle. Um, so it is counterintuitive to live a standard lifestyle with pasta and, and rice and all of these other things. So it um, when you go to consuming the proteins and the fats and you remove all of these other things and if you are going carnivore particularly then that's even better because now we're removing all of the other phytoalexins plant toxins uh, anti-nutrients because that's what fiber is fiber is an anti-nutrient uh, you begin to again absorb more of these nutrients and we can assimilate them and process them and we become healthier and fitter and stronger um, so the, yeah, a few things that, I mean, we could go to town. We, I think there's a whole sort of two hours that we could probably do on, on, on athletic performance. Uh, and again, you know, um, uh, Jonathan, and I go into this in the podcast that I'm releasing soon, 
uh, you know, we, we touch base on athletic performance amongst loads of other things. So stay tuned for that. And there's plenty more available on, on all of our channels. Uh, Stephen's, uh, my YouTube channel, and uh, uh, Jonathan's YouTube channel as well. Uh, lots of, of things to do with athletic performance. So, so feel free to check those out. Yeah, great. I hope that was helpful. Uh, here we go. Uh, we've got Landers here. Good evening, Richard and Stephen. I have an enlarged prostate gland, weak urinary flow. Would a carnivore diet be contraindicated with this condition? I can't find any info on it. Right. Well, the first thing I would say is if you go on Google, and sadly, if you go on to YouTube and you do some searches, you're not going to get good information about carnivore, low carb or ketogenic diets, because a lot of what we talk about, the WHO, which is a business, it's not an independent health organization, they do get funding, um, what will hide the information from you. And as I said last week, if I was looking to improve my health um, 10 years ago, I would have done a Google search, I would have done a YouTube search, and I would have found Keto, I would have found Ken Berry, Eric Berg, all those sort of people. Um, now, I wouldn't find it. I genuinely wouldn't find it. So here we go. So yes, so I, I would firstly say it's very doubtful the carnivore diet would be contraindicated, rather because it's an anti-inflammatory diet. It's definitely anti-inflammatory. Too many people have said this, they, they've experienced it. It would improve. It would improve your situation. You see, if what happens? The, the bladder obviously fills with a certain amount of urine, and then uh, as it stretches, it it pushes and it gives you the desire to urinate. If your prostate um, enlarges, it pushes up into this area, and it makes the internal size of the bladder smaller. But because the, the prostate is pushing up against the bladder, um, the bladder misreads it as a full bladder waiting for you to urinate because the prostate is pushing up. So therefore, when you then uh, urinate, what happens is you get a weak flow. Um, and much like the old-fashioned uh, cistern systems for toilets um, in the UK where you'd have a big chamber full of water and you'd have a chain which you would pull and gravity would make that flush go if you put bricks into the system which is what people used to do to save water so your flush would didn't have so much water in there you would get a weaker flush and that's exactly what's happening with you uh, your prostate is pushing it well uh, this isn't medical advice this is talking generally actually about this condition can't give you um one-to-one -one advice landers uh, i'm afraid but anyway that's that's what happens. So I hope that makes sense. A prostate gland in flames gets large. Whatever is caused that, um, we don't really know. But that's what's making the weak urinary flow. That and the fact that the urethra is going to be inflamed. So the internals of that, so like a, you know, a, a hose pipe, if it's inflamed, what happens is the the interior, the, the space inside is, is, is smaller. So you're going to get um, a flow that's going to be a little bit um, weaker. So yeah, it should put the pressure up, but because you've got the volume, less water there, it just makes that, that, um, that situation. So uh, did you want to add anything to that, Rich? No, other than the fact that, um, when we become carnivore, uh, or ketogenic, um, we ketones block NLRP3 inflammasome. So they, they block, they block inf inflammatory markers which is why many of us experience much less uh, inflammation. So it, it makes sense. It's, uh, it, it's all, it, it all comes together, doesn't it? So live a clean and healthy lifestyle and block inflammation and all of these issues tend to, to go away when you speak to, um, to the masses. And it's, I hate, I hate that, um, that comment that we have to use all the time. You know, we can't give, um, you know, this individual health advice and all this sort of stuff. And it's, it, we, I don't understand why we shouldn't be able to just give advice. You know, it, it, it's uh, it, it, if it's our opinion. Um, but yeah, so, it's not, it's not designed for people like us that are sensible or have uh, you know honest no, degrees and, in and, physiology and, and, and health. It's to stop other people that. And I have heard people being given really bad advice. <laughs> I, I think that's a thing. 
Yeah, maybe one we could go into more detail on uh, the other platform, but uh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to go on to Rumble, yeah. Yes, uh, 8 o'clock. See, I said it out loud. Um, we're top four because I can never usually get on it on Sunday night. Information is top two. Right, so we're second. Right, that's very nice. That's very good. But who's number one? Anyway, right, Matthew, again, is Rubois tea the healthiest tea? I bought some and the packaging claims it's low in tannins. So, again, it. I, are you going to – Right, let's let's break it down. Um, in in a simple way uh, as I possibly can, um, plants can be used for medication. Medication is useful when you're sick. So if you are unwell and there is a plant compound that can help alleviate uh, a specific issue, then you know you can use that plant to do so. But what we shouldn't do is consume that product or that medication daily. So um, the, the food that I always come back to with this is one that would shock many is, is broccoli. Up until a few years ago, I believed that broccoli was incredibly good for me. And we're told that it's incredibly good for us because it's high in a compound called sulfropane. Uh, and sulfropane uh, is uh, touted as a chemical to help fight cancer, which is fantastic if you have cancer. So sulfropane is a compound used in chemotherapy, but you wouldn't take a chemotherapy pill unless you had cancer because chemotherapy kills every cell within the body. So why would you take a chemotherapy pill if you didn't have cancer? So if you are unwell and any of the, the so-called proposed benefits to drinking, you know, any tea or, or any other compound for that matter, if you have researched it and you have found that it does confer a benefit to uh, something that you were suffering with, then by all means use it. But it's qu quite often the case that when you remove everything else, all of these other things go away. You, you, your immune system improves. You don't become sick as often. Um, so you don't need to take in, you know, these uh, the, these these compounds. And it in the case of broccoli, broccoli sulfropane is so toxic that it doesn't exist in a healthy plant. It's created during the chewing process where myrosinase binds to glucoraphanin and it creates that isothiocyanate sulfropane. So it's so toxic it can't exist in a healthy plant. It's created as we chew on it, as the plant becomes under attack. So it's a defense chemical. So why would we be taking defense chemicals if we are not unwell? So if you are unwell and you believe that that tea is going to confer a benefit through research that you have done independently, you know, I don't believe what it says on the packet. Look, look at it yourself. Look through research, you know, on the BMJ, for example, um, and come to your own conclusions. Uh, so plants are fantastic for medications. If you're sick, brilliant. If you're not, then you do not need them, in my opinion, which, Great. again, Great is not medical advice. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to tell me later why I rubbed you up the wrong way when I said that. So, Sash no, mode. You, you didn't. It's just the whole thing. The whole, you know, we're not allowed to give advice. And yet, I mean, it, the reality is this is why... This is why we're here, isn't it? But it is, it's education, isn't it? You know, all we're it's doing education. is yes. providing education based on research that you and I have carried out and... Um, real experience. Real experience with ourselves, yeah. clients, customers, mm -hmm. et cetera, and the whole network that we move and and, uh, and work with. Yeah. But, so yeah. Sash, Sash Mode, I think, might have missed. So uh, this was posted at 7.23, and it, it, it's now 7.51. So we're, we're trying to keep up, I promise you. Sash Mode, just wondering what products do you both use to wash your face, shower with, use a deodorant, et cetera. So um, most of that has been answered earlier on, so you'd have to watch the replay. But I didn't mention deodorant, but I want to very quickly say one of the things I'm gobsmacked about is I don't need deodorant. Um, and everyone who's not carnivore might cringe at this, but things like my socks and T-shirts and stuff like that, I don't have to wash every time I wear them. Even socks that I use when I play football. So I've got a pair of socks, which I've used for the last five weeks in my five-a-side football, which I've got back into after 10 years away from it. And they don't smell. They don't smell. Uh, I don't need deodorant. And I think when you're, reasonably strict carnivore 
you don't smell. And I was thinking about this from, you know, the old histories when you see sort of costume dramas and stuff like that. I used to think, wow, they must have really stunk. But <laughs> I don't think they, I don't think they did. Not, uh, not really, because if you are eating a decent diet, you don't smell, actually. And I think there's also... You know, a lot of the old films, when they went back in, they had medieval serving wenches and all this sort of stuff. They'd always make their teeth really black. But actually, it's only since we've had lots of sugar that the teeth are really bad. And you've only got to look at um, nations, African nations, to look at their teeth. Uh, and they're fantastic, aren't they? So let's go to, the, I think this is another question. And by the way, guys, I have put a um, link in the chat for the next hour, eight o'clock on Rumble. So Tom J said, uh, comments on protein kinase. An influencer I follow claims that if you overeat on a meal, you stimulate it and it triggers inflammation, therefore going against OMAD. Not convinced, to be honest. No, well, AMPK is the opposite to mTOR. So the body needs stages of growth. So mTOR and AMPK work uh, in a seesaw effect, almost against each other. Um, we need periods of growth, healing, and, and repairing, but we can't elicit a con constant activation of mTOR because that will lead to all sorts of other things like oxidative damage and stress and, and all these other issues. Um, lots of uh, groups of people uh, amongst the world have shown um, lower uh, lifespans with increased mTOR, particularly bodybuilders who consume lots of carbohydrates. So we need... We need the balance. Um, I'm a big fan of, of eating one meal a day. Um, but what I would say is that you don't have to live that way if you don't want to. A lot of the benefits to being ketogenic, the brown fat activation, even um, autophagy and mitophagy, lipolysis, are all activated through just being ketogenic, even if you were to eat you know, all the way through the day. So you don't have to fast. It's just that that state of autophagy is increased when fasting. But I would say that eat as you feel. So if you feel hungry, eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, and then, you know, eat again when you're hungry again. So if eating one meal a day suits you, fantastic. Unless you were suffering with other issues like loss of hair, you know, fatigue and all these sorts of, there's lots of other confounding factors, but AMPK is essential. We, you know, we, it's essential for, um, the homeostasis of the human body. So it's it's a load of rubbish. It, it look, All you need to do is Google autophagy and you will see all of the benefits of cellular repair and regeneration. The body will clean all the old, sick and dying cells and create new, younger, stronger, fitter, faster ones. And it's been shown to improve lifespan and longevity. So um, why would that ever be a negative thing? But again, you know, we wouldn't go 30 days without eating unless we had to doesn't mean that we can't, uh, you know, but there are cases in which you would do so. Maybe if you suffered with cancer or something, um, you know, that gentleman from Scotland who went 372 days, I believe, Steve, fasted. 382. But 382 yeah. Um, you yeah. know, so th there are circumstances where you can do extended fasts, but eat when you're hungry, listen to your body. Yeah, that's cool. So do you know this person that's put the comment up? I do. I do. No, yeah. How do you pronounce her, how do you pr pronounce her I, name? I, I believe it's no. I may be wrong, no. but that's that's right. how I, that's how I pronounce it. Yeah. In, okay. in my Welsh well, I'm going to read this because it sounds a bit crass coming from you, Rich. So here we go. And this is what's been posted. Highly recommend Keto Pro products. I'm in every week stocking up on electrolytes, MCT, collagen, and raspberry bomb yum. Going to have a T-shirt made, fueled by Keto Pro. Def helped with five and a half stone loss so that's good so firstly i, I mean i want to say the website is theketopro.com and you can get 10 percent off your first order if you're interested by the way th this live question and answer thing isn't to sell products but if someone's going to tell you how good it is um we might as well do that because everyone else does it and i saw your eyes light up when she talked about the t-shirt rich yes Are you think you're doing some merchandise then yeah, so I do have some. It's just not available on the website, which I will sort you out with. So drop me a message and we will get something printed. I wouldn't have you pay in to put that on. So we'll get you Keto pro up. But um, okay. that's what I, I always wear. So Keto Pro, fueled by fat. I don't know if you can see it, which way we go in. 
Yeah. So that's what's, that's what's on there. And you need it the... like the size. I've got this online coach thing. You need well, it. And then wear it. And then people... Oh, you got it on the back. That's all right. That. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, yeah, keep the pro everywhere I go. So, yeah. And do you know, when I eat, eat out, I feel like I'm making a statement. You know, so people sometimes feel uncomfortable or, you know, what if I'm with family and, well, I go branded keto pro, so I can't even put those things in if I wanted to, but I like to make a <laughs> statement when I'm, when I'm out for food, but, um, yeah. 